as a chamber of commerce who is conducting various program and seminar uh, since last couple of days and especially when there is a udyog festival going on so parallelly with the udyog we are relaying few of the topics specially on the exports and for exports we are conducting a various programs in the morning itself we were having a exports opportunity program with considering the various parts of i mean exports with the various commodities is respect to whether it's for the products for a service for the software so all kind of area we covered and <coughs> we conduct the first program today morning in the line of the same uh, today we are also organizing in the second half that is this program that is on the gati shakti and the exim process digitalization and we have a very extreme grace for the same mr suman ji from the nicdc and sri harish kolkata wala ji along with them on the dais i also request uh, our president sri ramesh wagasia ji to start with an opening speech with the welcoming all the people sir i also would like to say that with us uh, from the embassy of india uh, of india in egypt nivedita uh, she is also with us so there are few people who has also joined so uh, with this i request mr president to please open the forum gandhi ji jare bharat ne swatantra karvani baat kari ne shuruaat kari ne tyara panch vyakti ho jata and we are enough fortunate have more than five etla mate ke gati shakti nam no shabd amna gana samay thi samlay che pan haju loko ne samjhatu nathi ke shu che ne sha mate che and how it is going to be change the picture of india in a different way concerning indian economy so far as the world economy is concerned and that's why we need to make it aware that what gati shakti is and how the logis log logistics is playing a vital role in the life of every citizen of any country at this eve of the day from the sadan gujar chamber of commerce and industry i would like to welcome our speaker and honorable guest of the today sri anshuman patnaik ji the manager business development nicdc logistics data data services sir we would like to welcome with warm regards you are most welcome here at the premises of sgcci i think it is the first time in the history of sgcci we are going to organize this session on this subject on this session and that's why it is the important with the help of our honorable friend and a member and a leader and a technocrat and our helping hand a technology man mr resh kolkata wala we welcome both of you my honorable treasurer of sccci kiran bhai thumar our honorable ceo mr parish bhai bhat of m84 sccci honorable chirag bhai khimani friends and invited guests i welcome you all my dear friends and specially we have a presence of our valued embassy indian embassy ambassador at Egypt Sri Nivetha ji madam we would like to welcome you and we are happy to see you here at this august gathering today uh, at the SGCC premises under the mission 84 project and under udyog exhibition 2024 India's logistic cost at 14 percent at present, in a comparison with other countries around the world, with 8 to 10 percent of the GDP. How we are occurring more cost in some sectors, 
some matters that needs to be addressed and to be reduced to the level so as our economy can go fast with growing. PM Gati Shakti has targeted a reduced India's logistic cost to 7.5% of GDP. In this way, we have to be serious and conscious about the utilizing the resources and thereby various ways are there on which we can reduce our cost of logistics. There may be waterway, roads, cargo, etc. China's total waterway freight traffic amounted to 8.55 billion tons with a 51% share of total goods transportation in China. Similarly, USA with 16.9% and Japan with 99%. Japan with 99%, India's waterway freight traffic has only 2%. In many things we are num number one today in the world. In many things we are number two in the world. In many things we are number three, four, five, six, ten. But we are many things lacking behind. In, uh, and therefore, we need to address all these things and we need to be discussed. In case of roads, the average travel speed on national highway network increasing it from current 47 km per hour to an impressive 85 km per hour. The average travel speed on highways in United States exceeds 100 km per hour while in China it stands at 90 km per hour. So that we need to compare how we are and how we should do for that. And that's why the session is had. In case of cargo, India's average cargo release time period at seaports was 107 hours in 2021 and it come down to 85 hours in 2023. Whereas in China, the cargo release time is between only one to two days. Truck productivity in India is low compared to a global standards. For example, trucks in India travel about 300 km per day compared to the global average of 500 to 800 km per day. So, we can think how we are losing our resources and energy. Around 70% of India's freight is transported by road and only 17.5% is through rail. In, in India, current road transport transportation annual 4.8 billion metric ton is expected to grow by 3 times minimum. It may reach up to 5 times. And there is a problem of population density in India with increased demand for housing and industrial setup. Where we, where we will new land mass for the road come from to handle. And therefore, our very intelligent Prime Minister has thought about that after placing our many projects uh, in India and he thought that how it can be uh, resolved. And therefore, he launched a, a, a project a PM Gati Shakti on 13th October 2021 of cost of rupees 100 lakh crores that means 10 trillion rupees to manage and mitigate all these requirements. 100 PM Gati Shakti cargo terminals to be developed in next 3 years as announced in budget of finance year 2023. 20,000 crores will, will be mobilized through seamless connectivity through the expressway. It is the plan made in this budget. 25 kilometers national highway network to be expanded in 2023. Earlier I was um, reading in newspaper that daily 10 to 12 or 15 kilometers highway are being constructed. And today I am happy to read that more than 30 kilometers per day highway are being constructed under the great leadership of our Honorable Minister Nitin Gadkari ji. This way, 2000 kilometers of railway network to be brought under the coverage for safety and capacity amendment 
augmentation in 2023. 60 km long 8 ropeway projects to be awarded under <coughs> Parvatan Mala, um, Parvat Mala in 2023. 400 new generations Vande Bharat trains to be manufactured in next 3 years. We are seeing that everywhere Vande Bharat uh, regularly and periodically our Prime Minister are flagging off by green signal for Vande Bharat trains and, and this uh, speed, uh, quality train in which we are getting, I think it is a very good. I request Honorable Bhavesh Kala to be on uh, stage please. He is the Chairman of Udyog 2024. One station, one product, uh, railways to help local businesses and supply chain. Thereby, so many benefits are there of PM Gati Shakti project. Quantitative estimates for specific benefits are still emerging, but potential impacts include. Our IPP Imanshuvai Bodawala is also here. Give a big applause to him to welcome here. Thank you, sir. Amish Shah, he is a near about to Amit Shah. I am here to say, 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 I am here to say. So, benefits of PM Gati Shakti is like, reduce the logistic cost by 10 to 15 percent. After the transportation is done, it is 10 to 15 taka cost, which is the government no, अरिंद्रा भाई ने आशय चे अन्य इतना माटे आ 100 लाख करोड़ नी योजना मलमा मुकी चे इंक्रीज्ड एक्सपोर्ट कंपटिटिवनेस बाय 5 टू 8 परसेंट क्रिएशन ऑफ मिलियंस ऑफ जॉब्स इन वेरियस सेक्टर्स इंप्रूव्ड रीजनल डेवलपमेंट बाय ब्रिजिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर गैप्स एंड हर बाय वी विल हैव एन सॉल्यूशन � Inland waterways have to be developed and 50% of the total cargo movement has to be diverted through inlands to waterways. This way, various innovations, various new inventions, various new ideas needs to be bring out and to make this all this system efficient, capable to manage all these things what we the required and thereby to be a competitive by reducing the cost of the logistics and everything so as we we can be uh, uh, export competitive uh, to reach at the uh, inter uh, global level and thereby to make our beloved India a 5 trillion economy and and to make 1 trillion dollar exports from India to abroad by 2027 and therefore SGCCI has also vision like what Modi has dreamed about a Vixit Bharat by 2047 and our Bhubendra Bhai Patel CM of Gujarat has also dreamed out a Vixit Gujarat by 2047 and we all collectively can dream a Vixit Surat not at 2047 but before 2037 and we can be front and foremost on that base to lead India as a Vixit Bharat and therefore SGC has a vision of Mission 84 and on that online platform we have started onboarding various entrepreneurs from India and abroad and thereby to have an uh, exports of 84,000 crores of rupees from India to abroad to 84 countries and I am sure that it will make happen and Gujarat has always been a growth engine of India and like Surat is always been a growth engine for Gujarat not only for Gujarat and India but Surat sir is the fastest growing city in the world and therefore we should be front runner always there. With all this I welcome all you and thank you to all for being here. Thank you, thank you very much sir. Thank you, thank you Mr. President for your warm welcome speech.
now uh, we would like to take this program to a level 2 and that too uh, as we have a very distinguished guest from the NICDC and Trezix. Uh, so as for the rituals of our chamber, uh, we have to welcome our honourable guest with a flower felicitations. So I request the dais to please come forward uh, for the flower felicitations. Uh, first, I request uh, Sri Ansumanji to please come forward. Thank you, Anjumanji. Now I request Sri Harish Kalkattawala ji to please come forward. Friends, uh, in the beginning I already said that we at the Chamber of Commerce uh, are this year running with an initiative called Mission 84. But before I say something on the part of Mission 84, let me be, uh, would like to, I mean I, I would like to express something about the Chamber activity. Uh, I will not take much of the time, but I would like to conclude in two, three points that South Gujarat Chamber of Commerce is the oldest apex body Chamber of Commerce. This is our 84th year of establishment and probably I can say the oldest Chamber of Commerce in the Gujarat is South Gujarat Chamber of Commerce. We have established prior to even independence. Our established was there in 1940 and this is as I said, it is our 84th year of establishment. The second thing, we at a chamber, generally any chamber even if you look at, they are generally engaged into certain activities which are the common activity for any chamber if you look at. Whether the representation of the entrepreneur issues to the local or a state or a central government <coughs> or, 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 or the conducting the events, exhibitions, transforming delegation from one place to second place and second place to that place, these are all the common activity. But as far as the South Gujarat Chamber of Commerce is concerned, in our DNA, uh, in many, many speech I heard from our president or even the past presidents, wherein they always quote that the chamber, we have a dedicated building so called as a Samruddhi. And that Samruddhi means a prosperity. And that prosperity, it's just not only because the we people have done it, but there are the people, there are the pillars, I can say, who has done lots of things to make this chamber to this level. As I said, I said that our chamber is dynamic chamber, Con considering to the regular and routine programs which any chamber are doing, we at the chamber are always taking one or some other initiatives year on year. So under this year, uh, the leadership of Mr. President Ramesh Vagasiyaji, we have envisioned one program and that is Mission 84. The logic behind that M84 it is with respect to there are a history with the Surat. In the 15th, 16th and 17th century from the port of Surat, there was a 84 various countries international trade was happening. So in, in uh, renewed Gujarat it has said Choriasi Deshona Vauta Ahi Faraktata. So it means that we were, our entrepreneur was doing the business with the various countries even in that century where the technology which right now we people are using, that technology was not even there at that time. But the spirit of the entrepreneur of this area was such wherein we, we were compelled to do this kind of things. So, considering that things, this year we thought, let us reconnect, let us revamp our entrepreneur, let us, enter, uh, let us motivate our entrepreneur to do the business beyond the boundaries. 
and to do the business beyond the boundaries means we would like to engage our entrepreneur in terms of import and export. That's an international trap. That is what we are looking for. So this mission 84 is the program through which we would like to connect our entrepreneurs with rest of the world. We at the chamber has set up various ecosystem through which I can say does all, all the support system irrespective. So, so the, all the problems, all the hurdles for any entrepreneurs who are getting engaged into exports would have been eliminated. So for that we have various activities the way today we engage it. I mean we are calling you all as I said in the morning we were having some other program at the same time tomorrow we will going to conduct another two programs pertaining to exports. So these are all under the part of our skill development to at least make our entrepreneurs competent enough or at least who's, whatever the queries they have in their mind, we call the experts and get their query resolved. So these are all the process in terms of the ecosystem which we are established. So this is something on the part of mission 84 which I need to tell you. Friends, <coughs> about this program today, uh, as I said and Mr. President has already enlightened few of the things which was a very very promising in terms of the logistical development in our country. The guest Sian Suman Ji is from the NICDC. It's a National Industrial Corridor Development Corporation. The government of India is very much conscious towards the logistical development. Sir, we all are very fortunate enough that we are staying in India. India is the country where I can say almost 75 or 80 percent of our ge and geography it has touched with the sea, sea coastal. We have a very good infrastructure as on date if we can say. We have a very good mile connectivity. We have a very good rail connectivity. Probably the rail network which we are having, probably none of the other country is having that kind of laser. So in terms of when the logistics, see for, for according to me, any individual or any country or any company who needs to do an export, they have their prior, their, their prior worries is our logistics. We are so fortunate enough that government is taking adequate steps for the logistics development and we have already a very rich logistics corridors in terms of sea, in terms of air, in terms of road and rails as well. So we are sitting on the part of opportunity. We have to simply grab it. So this is something which today's our uh, guest will going to take it. The another <coughs> things I also would like to say something on the part of Mr. Harish Kalkatawala. So he is also our guest from the Trezix, the man of technology which uh, Mr. President has already named him. And definitely it's a matter of proud for we as a Surti that because he's a born and brought up in Surat but now established in Mumbai. Connected with very good in terms of the logistic solutions in government of India. His inputs in the logistics area is a very, very matter for the government of India in terms of the logistics and the commercial development. So we are fortunate that today we have also Mr. Harish Kalkatawala with us. So now I request our first guest, see Ansuman Patnaik Patakji, to please uh, say on your uh, first presentation. Unified Logistics Interface Platform. Ajo Unified Logistics Interface Platform. Yani you live or you make up the you live. यूलिट लॉन्च हुआ है उसे निर्यातकों को इस लंबी प्रक्रिया से मुक्ति मिलेगी यूलिट ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सेक्टर से जुड़ी सभी डिजिटल सेवाओं को एक ही प्लेटफॉर्म पर लेकर आएगा in order to reduce the logistics costs in India from 13 to 14 percent of the current GDP to a single digit and to improve India's ranking in the logistics performance index, many initiatives have been undertaken. One of the initiatives is the Logistics Data Bank, LDB, established by NICDC in 2016. LDB uses the RFID technology to ensure 
Consignments and container movements are tracked and traced using a single window. LDB is also integrated with Railway's FOIS system and the Terminal Operating System TOS of ports. In the past seven years, on all container handling ports of the country and in more than 93 toll plazas, more than 366 CFSs, ICDs, empty yards and parking plazas, 37 SEZs and at three integrated border check posts, LDP has installed more than 2,820 RFID readers and more than 6.2 crore containers being seamlessly tracked. This is an important step towards ease of doing business. To overcome the challenges of COVID pandemic of 2020 and to take India's economy to new heights under the visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, and with the support of Niti Aayog, the development of Unified Logistics Interface Platform, UNIP, was undertaken by NICDC. In the budget speech of 2022, the Honorable Finance Minister introduced Unified Logistics Interface Platform, ULIP, to the nation. NICDC has developed ULIP as a logistics gateway solution that works on a request-response basis and does not store data from any ministry. No personal identified information is shared on this platform. ULIP is being developed in two phases. In phase one, under ULIP, 1800 plus fields in 34 systems of 8 ministries and more than 112 APIs have been integrated till now. In phase 2, measures are being taken to make these services simple, better and beneficial. ULIP is divided into three layers, integration, governance and presentation layers. The development of integration and governance layers is looked after by NICDC and for the presentation layer, the private sector is being encouraged to participate so that they can make new applications and use the other two layers more efficiently. In the future, ULIP will play the role of a gateway to authenticate all logistics transactions in the country. ULIP will help in strengthening the logistics infrastructure, reduce the cost, increase efficiency, and enable domestically manufactured goods to compete in the international market. Unified Logistics Interface Platform Redefining Logistics Special thanks to the SGCCA team for inviting us so that uh, we can able to present uh, both ULIP and LDP, the other two uh, projects that NICDC Logistics is handling under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And uh, I especially thanks Ramesh ji, uh, Sanjay ji, Pradesh ji, uh, Haris ji, and Amish ji for uh, you know, inviting us. And so we can start. Before uh, I go to ULIP, I have a couple of slides of LDB. LDB is another project of NICDC Logistics. Uh, LDB is a part of ULIP now. I will uh, I'll just run it through uh, specifying the time I have sorted out of time. So, uh, so this is uh, LDB, Logistic Data Bank. Logistic Data Bank is actually focusing on the containerized movement that is happening in India. The Logistic Data Bank uh, give visibility across containerized movement of uh, goods, uh, whether it is in ports, CFS, ICDs, as soon as a container move, uh, unloads at the port and it goes to the CFS or ICDs or to any go down, it gets tracked through the multiple uh, technologies we have installed at LDB. So likewise, in the given we have, a Logistic Data Bank is an Indo-Japan community project and uh, before uh, LDB there is no such mechanism in the country to get tracking of the logistic movements, the car, car containerized movements. So in 2009 the concept of LDB was initialized. In 2015 one special purpose vehicle SPV was formed that is an ICDC Logistics Data Limited uh, with a joint venture of NEC Corporation Japan and Nikdit Trust which is under the government of India. And in 2016 we have started operating at JNPT port, then we have started at uh, on the APCJ Mundra, 
and in 2020 we are uh, cover, through Pipawa port installation we covered the 100% exim containers movement. Now in India, if a container is getting exim container is getting unloaded, then it is getting tracked on LDP portal. This is the workflow of LDP. How LDP works? LDP as soon as a container get unloaded on the port, either it will go by out by road or by rail. So as soon as the it will go out by road, we have our RFID installed at get in and get out. And as soon as this, as you can see, these are the RFID tags that are getting installed on the containers. These are the handheld devices through which the scanning is uh, made and the data is being flowed. So if a container moves through roadways, then we have our RFID installed tagged at various uh, toll plazas across uh, state and uh, national NH. And the data get phased through. Likewise, we have our RFID installed at CFS get in and get out. Likewise, if a container moves to the uh, railways, then we have FOIS uh, system of railways that is also got integrated. So through FOIS, we get the data on LDA portal. Same way on the return journey, it goes through uh, the same uh, flow as soon as it, uh, until it goes out of the Indian territory. So this is the overall operational flow of LDB. Uh, this is the coverage uh, of LDB. Currently 17 ports, 28 terminals has been covered. Uh, 113 toll plazas, 410 CFS, ICDs, MTRs. These are the areas where our RFID uh, readers has got installed. Also along with that, three major systems that has been integrated on LD. One is POIS that is of railways. One is PCS that is port community system. One is TOS that is terminal operating system. So these are the three systems through which the data get flow to LDB. Uh, these are some of the uh, milestones that has been done. 100% tracking of uh, exim containers in India. Um, as Sir Ramesh sir was saying some uh, few minutes back that India stands rank 1 and rank 2 somewhere. In logistic till 2023 India was 44th rank. So now uh, under world map the last LPI rating India is now 38th rank. And in the world map report they have specifically mentioned LDV project as one of the key uh, uh, you know aspect where they can able to get the data through which the dwell time, the congestion time got reduced so that the logistic cost got reduced and India's rank got, uh, you know, it got up. So uh, they have mentioned that. Accordingly, we do have our analytics report uh, on a monthly, quarterly and annually basis. We publish our analytics report which gives uh, performance analysis of every stakeholder. So we have all the ports, all the terminals, all the CFS. We we give them the analysis report that what is your dwell time last month, what is your dwell time this month, so they can increase it. They can they can check their efficiency and they can work on it. This is the LDV portal we have. As you can see, uh, if you enter a container number, then it will give the route mapping proper uh, where is the container and what is the route they have uh, mapped and where it is uh, currently. So this is overall LDV. LDV is in part of Yulip. ULIP is Unified Logistic Interface Platform. It was launched by Honorable Prime Minister under National Logistics Policy under PM Gati Sakti on September 2022. The basic motive of ULIP is to bring down the logistic cost from double digit to single digit. I'll just run through the uh, you know introduction of the ULIP. As I was saying, it was launched by Honorable Prime Minister. It is an API based integration. Uh, currently, we are having eight ministries, 36 systems has got integrated on ULIP through these API integrations. The all the, the major difference between LDB and ULIP is LDB was more focused on the containerized movement whereas ULIP gives multimodal traffic uh, visibility across multimodal transport. And we have a dedicated platform of GoULIP.in wherein you can able to uh, check the integrations that are there on ULIP portal so an organization can able to register themselves can able to check what are the data there on ULIP and can use, uh, develop use cases accordingly. This is the architecture of ULIP. As you can see on the screen, we have the ministries and the data which are there on ULIP portal. For example, FOIS, uh, which is of Ministry of Railways, like in Ministry of Shipping, MOPSW, we have PCS, we have NLP Marine, we have IWAI. Under Ministry of Civil Aviation, we have three systems, ACMES, I-Class and ACCS. Ministry of Mighty, we have DG Locker. Uh, under GSTN, we have E-Way Bill. Under Ministry of Road Highways, we have Vahan, Sati, Fastag, E-Chalan. 
under Ministry of Customs, we have ICE Gate. So likewise, as you can see, there are multiple ministries and multiple systems under those ministries that are being integrated on Yuli portal through which the data is getting communicated, which helps the companies to evaluate their performances and the main motive of logistic bringing now logistic cost is getting achieved. This is an overall view of ULIP 36 systems, 114 APIs and 1800 plus fields under 140 APIs that has got on ULIP portal till now. This is the data government's layer as I can see. Uh, this is a request response based system. When I say request response based system, for example, uh, I, I would name uh, Trezix. Trezix has been a part of ULIP for a very long time and they are working very good. And so the requirement which Trezix wants, they will put it, then they will get the output of that. So it's a request response based system. ULIP doesn't store any data. ULIP doesn't store the aggregate data. It is as per the requirement of an organization. They want the data, they have to put it and uh, ULIP will fetch it up. Uh, as I was saying, there is uh, ULIP only store the transactional data. ULIP doesn't store uh, the data on its portal, apart from the transactional data, which is under uh, Ministry of MIT uh, as per the node guidelines. So no personal data is getting uh, shared over ULIP like PAN, Aadhaar, these are personal data. So this is this will be marked as per the Ministry's uh, Act, IIT IT Act. So as per that, the mass data will be showcased to the end user mass only, say, keeping in mind the personal information. So uh, as I was discussing, the whole uh, ULIP has been developed on node guidelines of meeting and a uh, secure method of the concerned ministries which are there on ULIP has been maintained. This is the ULIP portal. Once you visit ULIP portal, you have to register a company. For example, a company wants to register, they will be registering themselves with a very minimum document, either a PAN, either a GST, either an incorporation certificate. We just need a bare minimum uh, certificate as this is a government project. So, uh, to register themselves, when they register, they can able to check the, which are the systems integrated on ULIP, who, what is their requirement, which are the systems they want to integrate. They can download that and they can use it. Accordingly, we have a dedicated helpline number. Helpline team is there 24, uh, from morning 9 to 5 and uh, they work continuously on the queries raised by the customers and uh, subsequently we have a helpline email address as well. So, I'll just brief through the benefits that ULIP is providing. Uh, for example, we have 36 systems. We are finding out some of the systems and the benefits which a common man can use. Like Sati, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to driver compliances, uh, vehicle detail, the license details, the challenge details, all those things can be achieved through Sati API. Or likewise, in FastTag, you can able to get the location of a vehicle, the latitude, longitude, all those things can able to be uh, achieved on ULIP. Through Vahan, you can able to compliance as the vehicle details, like the vehicle compliance is as per the POC or not, the POC has happened or not, is as per the BS6, BS5, there are uh, regulations which that has been maintained or not. Likewise, in FOIS, the source destination pin code of the railway cargo movements are getting tracked and one organization can able to estimate the time of arrival as well. Likewise, in air cargo, uh, the house air bill member, the airway bill number, the tracking information of those can be achieved. Uh, likewise, in e-way bill, we have the source, pin code, destination, the status of the e-way bill, validity of e-way bill, what is the commodity, com uh, category of commodity that is getting uh, uh, moved. Likewise, in e challenge which is very required by the surface logistics uh, uh, companies, that whether in challenge has been there or not. So, all those things can be achieved with a single login password. What is the main benefit of ULIP is before ULIP, for example, a company wants to check the each alert, they have to log into the each alert uh, website and they have to check. Then they have to log into the Vahan. In ULIP, you, in a single login password, you can able to get information of 8 ministries, 36 systems, which is, which is uh, readily available to the public at large. Likewise, DGFT, likewise, ICE Gate, ICE Gate, you can check the uh, uh, shipping bill number, the bill of entry in details, uh, which is a very important part uh, when it comes to the, uh, you know, exam processes. Likewise, in DG Locker, you can able to do the EKYC, Logistic Data Bank, I was just discussing about the containerized movement. 
So these are some of the benefits that the industry players can take. For example, a, a manufacturer or a trader, they can able to automate their gate systems. They can able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, estimate their estimate time of arrival and accordingly they can plan their operations. Likewise, in logistic service provider, they can able to uh, manage the tedious documentation part, which is uh, a very lengthy process in itself. And by minimizing this, they can not only able to save the time, but also able to save the cost as well, which will bring efficiencies. For example, transporters can able to validate their third party transporters. They can able to validate their, their vehicle compliances, their driver compliances. Startup, uh, startup is one of the major part of ULIP. We have uh, multiple startups working with us, uh, giving very innovative ideas uh, on uh, exim policy digitalization, on uh, green logistics. I'll be giving some of the use cases on my later on slides that how ULIP is benefiting the whole ecosystem. Uh, likewise, in government agencies, uh, now ULIP has been integrated with uh, uh, 10 state PDS, the public distribution system the grains, the food grains that are getting uh, transferred in uh, state comments, those systems are getting integrated in ULIP. We are also in discussion with Gujarat Infrastructure Development Board uh, and they have started using ULIP services. Uh, they are actually coming up with some ideas of uh, city planning, uh, traffic planning for which they are uh, integrating with ULIP and taking ULIP services. So. Uh, Likewise, there are some of the use cases I will be briefing. We have around 500 plus use cases we have received till now. Out of which we have categorized some of the use cases which can be benefit to the industry at large. Like uh, I was uh, talking the track and trace to know where the vehicle is. This is the basic use case of you uh, a manufacturer, a transporter can able to track where its vehicle is so that they can able to plan accordingly. They can have fast tag and voice system to give their uh, you know visibility across road movements and railway movements. Likewise in gate automation, when we, we started discussing with this with the ministries, with the various companies, uh, some of the large manufacturers of the country, uh, I will not name it, but they are one of the large manufacturers, having so much of, uh, you know, uh, planning, having so much of manpower, this is one use case which is uh, very bottleneck for them. They could not able to, uh, uh, you know, ease out the gate automation system. They could not able to uh, uh, decrease the dwell time which they in our normal consumes in the gate. Likewise, uh, green logistics. Green logistics is one of the major use cases that are being developed by many uh, startups, and this is one of the future uh, use case we can say, wherein the CO2 emission, the carbon emission that are getting uh, emitted through vehicle movements, that are getting checked. The compliances of vehicles are getting checked, whether their vehicle is as per the rule set by the industry or not. How much carbon emission it is using, which are the route they are uh, uh, you know, uh, taking for their journey from A to B. So those things can be able to track through ULIP uh, services. Process digitalization. Process digitalization, is, this is one, uh, I could say, use case which will directly Apart from the track and trace and from the other services, this uh, process design is one service which can able to help in minimizing the logistic cost. This will also help in minimizing the manual errors that are being uh, done through manual entries. For example, in exam process, uh, there are a lot of uh, in, uh, invoices, lot of documentation that has to be manually entered. Now, for example, in shipping bill number or an uh, bill of entry details, if you directly put that number all the necessary fields are getting auto fetched through ULIP. So there is no manual entry. So one thing is manual entry hoga nahi to wo chalan nahi kat galat nahi jayega. And agar wo galat jayega na wo fir bahar jo jata hai international border pe wahan se company na jata hai wahan pe clear nahi hota hai. So that thing is getting solved through process digitalization. I guess Trezix is working on process digitalization and they can able to expand more usage through this. Likewise, third party transport validation, when uh, a transporter or an organization hires a third party with uh, some associations or something, they on, on board around multiple vehicles. So this third party transport validation, they can able to check the vehicle is of right category or not. The vehicle is as per their requirement, as per their usage, as per their compliances or not. So the third party validation starting from driver to vehicle, that can be done with a single click. This is the status update of ULIP.
currently 770 plus companies have registered on new lip uh, more than 190 companies have delivered use cases the requirements to a uh, specific format of use case we have more than 510 plus use cases that has been received more than 156 companies have signed MOU and uh, taking data from ULIP portal for development of uh, their uh, you know operational benefits more than 23 crore API hits got uh, transacted in the last one and a half year and uh, more than 40 plus companies have developed 74 applications using ULIP services and uh, they have developed their applications and doing business these are some of the companies uh, out of the 160 plus companies who are working with us. There are some of the companies that we have tried to sum it up in one slide. We have bifurcated in LSP is uh, some of the large giants working with us. Some of the new startups which are very new with a very uh, you know small team. They are just initiating. So uh, this is all about I have from ULIP and LDB. And uh, if uh, anyone have any question or any discussion, any inputs, uh, we can discuss it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your uh, very brief presentation. <coughs> now I request uh, Sri Harish Kalkatta ji to please say on uh, the part of yours. So, uh, good evening friends, uh, good evening all, uh, good evening people uh, and members online, so uh, hi to everyone there. Uh, so, let's talk about, I think uh, Anshuman ji ne kafi explain kya, so let's talk about what we are work, what we are doing and what is the use case on which we were working with Julep and what industry problem we are trying to solve. So one of the major industry problem where we are focusing is, uh, and this is what our Honorable Prime Minister keeps saying, how do we kind of simplify the whole exim as a process of so ease of doing business in India, right? So when we are talking about ease of doing business in India, right now people are literally getting uh, kind of like, you know, scared when it comes to export or when it comes to import by three means and I will explain what are those three means. So one is the process is lengthy. This is what we keep saying because there are multiple steps. Second, there are a lot of compliance related stuff. So we talk about bank uh, which has got a compliance which is we call it EDPMS, IDPMS. So those who are in exam, they know like you know that anything which goes out of country or anything which comes within the country okay the payment has to be tallied at the uh, up to the last penny right otherwise there is a compliance issue similarly there is a major issue on track and trace okay now when i say track and trace so there are in the multi model there are three legs right so one is within the country then whatever oh, air or ocean whatever is involved and then there is a last leg which is the outside country so, how do we make sure that end-to-end -end traceability is established, right? And most important thing is, if you have to do a sustainable foreign trade, how do you make sure that your customer or your supplier is satisfied? At the end of the day, when we talk about exit, it is all about relationship and repeat business. So, if there is no repeat business or there is no relationship, that business is not sustainable and this is where we were struggling and after COVID or during COVID we got an opportunity to kind of uh, like you know most of the places we are looked as a substitute of China. So that is an opportunity but how do you capitalize that opportunity this is where uh, we were working. So now let me uh, come to uh, like you know uh, how we and Yulip are working together. So uh, I mean Anshuman ji spoke about like you know uh, process digitalization. So, when we talk about process, so let's say take an import. So, right from purchase order to kind of making sure the entire compliance, to making sure all the documentation, to verify with system like IceGate, DGFT, uh, system like LDB, okay, uh, even the tracking of vehicle, tracking of container, tracking of air cargo. So, under one platform, through each step of the process, everything is getting verified with a proper authenticate data source which is LDB plus ULIP together, right? And that gives you a confidence that okay, your process is completely compliance in terms of 
uh, the, the document authenticity, numbers, whatever, whatever digits we are populating, that is all are getting online verified. <coughs> Most important thing is in this whole process right now. So I will have to give some statistics. So if you talk about India, exam process is 99% manual. 99%. Okay, only 1% digitized. What is the digitization? We create GST invoice out of system. We create uh, the commercial invoice out of system. Otherwise, every step of the whole exam is manual. When I say manual, it also includes Excel, Word, or email, right? So now, when you talk about Excel, Word, or email, let's say people keep uh, like you know uh, talking about government is harassing us and this and that. They are asking three-year-old data, four-year-old data, and you guys struggle. Why you struggle? Because you don't have any authenticate system where this data is stored. So somebody will call you and ask you like you know that this particular shipping bill or a bill of entry three years back, uh, it is not getting reconciled with the bank, right? Or bank will ask you that this this shipping bill you have not presented, and you start searching for it. Why? Because you need to understand one important element what. Anshumanji also spoke about that under ULIP there are multiple 8 ministry systems almost like 26 plus systems getting embedded into one platform. So right now if you just get into your mindset and see in your company there are 5 or 4 departments which works on import and export. Right? So somebody working with bank he will go and he will prepare as per his understanding and submit some document to the bank. Somebody doing an export documentation or an import documentation, he will tell by CHA ko de do, wo kar dega apne aap. Okay? Because we have, like, you know, we have done ease of ourselves, right? So CHA will go. And CHA is not responsible because wo pehle din aap se chitha likho aata hai. Jo bhi ho ghi ho aapke jimedari, uski koi jimedari. Right? So you, you give an open blanket statement. And what you feel proud is, oh, okay, <coughs> okay. that's what you feel proud of, but you don't know the compliance behind it, right? Third, when you talk about supplier or when you talk about freight forwarder, okay, how your material is shipped, where it is getting stored, where it is getting parked, okay, you don't know. When you know when somebody calls you. Right? Now, purchase department, logistics department, indirect tax, uh, account receivable, payable, her banda apne apne tarah se ye data apne apne agencies ko deta hai, koi custom ko deta hai, koi bank ko deta hai, koi CHA ko deta hai. But you have to understand all this data after GST, after all this system are getting reconciled with one another at some place, right? And if the data is mismatched, okay, you feel that government is harassing, but I would say you only create problem for yourself because you don't put system in your house and your team only is giving this data by five different means. Eki shipment, ka paaj admi ko, eki company paaj alag alag data dethi. So people, if you don't go with a digitized mindset, and work on a single source of truth, which is your own data, you are bound to have this problem, right? So, I mean, if you really talk about process digitization, if you have to really simplify ease of doing business in India, we have to change our mindset. See, government ka kaam tha, ek platform dena, ek achcha transparency create karne ka. So, ULIP has done that. It is our responsibility to consume this information and make sure that our transactions are really verified on a real-time basis, right? So then your problem is completely avoided for the future. Aaj humara business mindset kya hai? Aaj ka aaj pehle container bethte baad mein jo hoga dekha jayega abhi maal to nikal. This is the mindset which we carry, right? But that is, we are kind of parking something for future and then after two years or three years, Rather than focusing on the core business, our focus goes on solving the problems. So, if, and I have done some study also, so I am giving you some information. Right now, last one and a half year, if I have 
met not less than at least four to five thousand business houses, right? With with my team and all individuals and all. At least more than fifty percent has told me that most of the bandwidth of indirect tax team or the exim export manager or the import manager is spent on solving the past problems. And more and more people are added to handle those things. But that is not the way you can scale the business, right? The important thing to scale the business is to digitize, make sure your processes are efficient. Now, second problem I'll tell you: the mindset what we carry is, and this is a major difference between developed countries and developing countries. So, if you talk about US, Japan, even Germany, and most of these countries are personally state, so I can share that example. Even hundred transaction in a year they do. They want a system in place, process in place. What we feel is, अरे वो एक आदमी को रख लेंगे वो चाय भी लेके आएगा घर के बर्तन भी साफ कर लेगा and then he will do documentation also. That is not the way businesses are done, right? जो जिसका काम है उसको वही करना चाहिए. So if the system is required to do certain thing, you have to put that mechanism in place, right? So point here what? government has taken a leap of putting all this system in place and if we don't improve more and more compliance is going to harp on us because government ke paas bhi bahut data hai if, if what you saw every container coming into the country or going out of country is tracked and that to not at one point multiple touch point okay so somewhere it is going to Kind of come up not today tomorrow by some MIS. There are a lot of analytics being built, which can easily throw by use of lot of artificial intelligence and ML reports that there is some cow, some abnormality, something, some misbehavior can easily be caught up on. So point here, uh, I mean, just to summarize that let's change the mindset and focus more on how do we. put more process and system in place so that we focus on scaling the business see do taka tax bachana ya do taka cost saving kuch alag area mein karne se how to with a minimal effort i increase my business to 5x 10x and make more profit rather than i just focus on that 2% saving right so this is what that entrepreneurship may when we say that what makes a uh, A category entrepreneur different than rest of the entrepreneur. It is just that two percent mindset. Nothing else. If you just try to get out of that, if I'll be compliant, I'll increase my volume. I want to focus on right processes and right things. I think you will have more meaningful time to focus on business rather than all these things, right? So just with that. I, I would just like to summarize this here. If you have any questions, if you have anything, I mean, Parish Bhai, Ramesh Bhai, and Himan Shubha and all. So uh, any time you can post it to chamber. We are always there to kind of respond, and we are always there to help you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, that, that is remote frequency. So what what happens? डायरेक्ट कंटेनर के ऊपर एक टैग है सो दैट इज रिमोटली इट इज थ्रोइंग डेटा एंड दैट इज बीइंग कैप्चर्ड ओके सो देयर इज अ रिमोट फ्रीक्वेंसी बाय व्हिच द डेटा इट्स अ रिमोट फ्रीक्वेंसी इंटरफेस ओके सो बाय व्हिच एक्चुअली सी व्हेन वी हैव टेकिंग ऑन फास्ट ट्रैक ऑन आवर कार बट इट इज पासिंग थ्रू द कॉल कंट्रोल ना का सो द कैमरा इज कैप्स दैट आर यूनिक कैटेगरी ऑफ एस एस एवरी आर एफ आईडी जो टैग था एवरी आर एफ आईडी हैज अ यूनिक नंबर Like you have it, okay. it's a very unique number. So once a container gets out of the port gate or the CFS or the ICD, any gate where our uh, RFID is, is being installed, so first, what happens? Yeah, there is a scanner, there is a hand scanner. It is there, so it will scan that uh, RFID tag. It will scan that number. It will copy that. That scan will be done. Then as soon as that container moves to any toll plaza. Any railway station, it will catch. Automatically, it will, it will catch. automatically catch. That's why radio frequency, like fast tag, you might say. So fast tag, ma. So the only difference, fast tag, somebody still scan, right? Okay. But in the container movement, whether it is port, 
or whether it is uh, let's say railway it is automatically getting cooled not to stop not to stop right so nobody stops the container and say like you know i want to scan hey, once it is getting scan then the whole container through the whole process it will get the data okay. one more uh, for all of us uh, all the data you as you say are
विथ लाइक यू नो दैट मैं आपको पंद्रह दिन की जगह है दस दिन में दे सकता हूँ सो दस अ ह्यूज होल इको सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू गेट इम्पैक्टेड राइट इट्स नॉट ओनली अ बेनिफिट टू अ मैन्युफैक्चर और अ ट्रेडर द बेनिफिट इज टू द होल इको सिस्टम नाउ सी एच ए ऑल्सो विल गेट बेनिफिटेड हाउ बिकॉज देर बी एबल टू डू मोर बिजनेस सी द कंटेनर विल रिमेन द नंबर राइट यू सी कोविड वॉट है कंटेनर वेर लिमिटेड वी आर आउट ऑफ स्टॉक but now if you imagine that if the cycle of the container get reduced which means with the same container you can do more transactions right? so so that's the whole purpose of changing this whole game meaning so, of the bottleneck yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so if you're talking of resources ultimately the resources are getting lost पहले व्हाट वाज द अदर थिंग है व्हेन वी डिस्कस ऑन लॉजिस्टिक्स व्हेन इज लॉजिस्टिक्स पहले आ जाता है कि गाड़ी मूवमेंट हो रहा है लॉजिस्टिक कॉस्ट कम कम होगा थ्रू डिजिटलाइजेशन गाड़ी तो चलेगा वो तो चलेगा वो कहाँ पे है पेपर कब क्लियर होगा वहां से कम होगा इट इज नॉट अवर मैंडेट टू कंपल्सरी ऑन एनी वन but a public platform no 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 so i'll tell you indirectly jo hai jo aaj ek truck yahan se surat se delhi nikalti hai wo beech mein ek stop in jata ruk jata hai to usme time jo jata hai i will answer this i know i think sir just to just to add your i know i know just just to add your compulsory thing sir now some of the state governments have given a mandate to their state agencies to integrate on newly so that you know the compulsory we cannot say it's compulsory but the widespread of people can access to this only but but imagine you were just to answer your question na right now it is indirectly compulsory okay why i i tell you so any wahan or any driver detail you can immediately verify where that particular vehicle which so even the driver may not know even the vehicle owner may not know but you live by fastag has that exact data where yeah. what last all get uh, the vehicle has passed right so what is uh, what harish uh, ji was saying that as you live we have given a platform like the government has given a platform now it's up to the organizations who are using it to more efficiently use it yes. so that the, the process throughout the logistic ecosystem can get better so Yeah, 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 that's what I was actually saying. Five hundred companies are already using it. Now. Registered, uh, more than seven fifty uh, companies are registered. And uh, more than one uh, fifty companies are using on a live basis. So, okay. uh, so anyone from the you know uh, this audience, if they have any question. or uh, parallelly from the people who has joined online even if they want to have any ask a question please raise your hand so that we will unmute you and uh, your question will be considered anybody from the floor there is some question on chat i am not sure there are something on chat if you can check chitran also register you can also use it if you want or else uh, a joint collaboration can be happened so that you can educate your members we can have regular sessions we can educate them what the platform is how they can use it so this is one joint collaboration that we can start so is there any provision in, uh, from your organization or is to have any mou Uh, the MOU will be with NICBC Logistic Data Services because we are the have, that has been mandated to uh, you know render the services of ULIP. Mm -hmm. So uh, one uh, standard form of MOU is there that has to be uh, executed between both organizations. Yeah, yeah. We can we can definitely initiate that kind of MOU because we as a chamber are looking for that. 
uh, ultimately it will have benefited to all our 3 lakhs plus stakeholders. Right, right. Uh, some of the associations are also there. Some of the big associations of the country are also yeah, there. Uh, yeah, they are on a discussion of some large associations also being are using through this uh, signing of endo. Fine. So, I think uh, with this, I think we will go for the conclusion. But before that, uh, I also would like to say few of the things which uh, Harris by either intentionally or not say, but probably few of the things which I understand from your and uh, Ansumanji's uh, presentation, that upon a time, what the, what the question which I asked already, uh, the, we were the people who were working for the, I mean, we were working for the cycle time. Right. When, when, when there was a case in the earlier days, we at an Indian entrepreneur was worried towards our damage charges. Right. And Japan was a country who incorporated JIT just in time. Right. So, by adopting that kind of things, you said that logistic cost would have been transformed from two digit to single digit. That is, I, I think at present, I mean 13% to 7% probably it's the targeting. Yeah. So, if it is so, probably 3% would be a saving for an entrepreneur which is again a very good in terms of the market. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, the, the I there is a question in the chat What box. are the charges of your system? You okay, uh, as far as charges are concerned, it is free of cost as a part of right now. It is free of cost, there are no charges. Uh, a dedicated uh, portal, goulib.in, uh, uh, that can be, uh, you know, uh, access to all the systems that are, uh, they are integrated. So, yeah, you can ask the question. Unmute, you ask it. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, I am Inayi, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I go with your, you say the link. And uh, yes, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, with this note, uh, uh, I request the uh, immediate past presidency, Himan Subhai, to please add on a few of the points if something would have been missed out from our side and extend a word of thanks from your side, sir. Uh, Chamber of Presidents, Sri Adanya Sri Ramesh Bhai Vagasya Ji. Today, we have two of our eminent speakers, Ansuman Patnayak Ji and our own Harish Kattawala Ji and all the dignitaries here. It was a very good session, a very technical session. It means that for the truth, it is very much more than it is. फैलाना चाहिए क्योंकि सूरत से डेली हजारों ट्रक निकलती है और पूरे इंडिया में छोटे छोटे गांव छोटे छोटे शहर में जाती है अगर एक ट्रक समझो एक दिन भी अगर बचाती है तो कितना सेविंग होगा वो आप हम लोग समझ सकते हैं ये यूलिप का जो प्रोग्राम था हमें सबसे पहले तो अंशुमान जी को तालियों से उनको बधाई देना चाहिए कि इतना अच्छा प्रोग्राम देश को दिया है और 100 परसेंट इसका और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा इसका प्रमोशन हमें सूरत में तो करना ही चाहिए काफ़ी सारी एसोसिएशन से उसमें भी आप जाइए और वहाँ जाके उनको भी थोड़ा सा इसके बारे में बताइए सो थैंक यू वेरी मच अंशुमान जी फॉर कमिंग हियर एंड प्रेजेंटिंग योर पेपर हरेश भाई हमारा अपने उनको जब भी सुनना होता है तो अच्छा लगता है और मतलब एक ऐसा काम हरेश भाई ने किया है जिसके लिए हमें पूरे सूरत को प्राउड होना चाहिए कि ये जो इंटीग्रेटेड पूरा सिस्टम है एक ही प्लेटफॉर्म पे आपको सब मिल जाता है वो बहुत बड़ी बात होती है पहले डिपार्टमेंट तो डिपार्टमेंट जाना पड़ता था और अभी एक ही यूलिप में ही आपको सब डॉक्यूमेंटेशन हो जाता है तो उसके लिए भी आपका आपने भी जो पेपर दिया आपने भी जो प्रेजेंटेशन दिया उनके लिए भी धन्यवाद हरेश भाई थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर बीइंग हियर अगर आप लोग नहीं आते तो ये सेमिनार ही नहीं होता मुझे एक कहानी याद आती है दो मिनट ज्यादा लूंगा एक गांव में एक बहुत बड़ा संगीतकार था राजा ने बोला कि आप आइए और हमारी जनता को एक अच्छा सा संग, कुछ संगीत दीजिए गाना दीजिए उस वो ज्यादा नहीं था पब्लिक में ज्यादा था उसने राजा को बोला कि मेरी एक ही शर्त है मैं आऊंगा अगर ऑडियंस में कोई भी एक आदमी ने भी अगर गाने के समय मुंदी हिलाई 
तो मैं वहीं से बंद कर दूंगा पूरा हॉल भर गया उसने वो संगीतकार ने शुरू किया गाना अपना दस मिनट के बाद उसमें से एक आदमी ने उसमें मुंडी हिलाई मतलब वो तन्मय हो गया उस गाने में तो वहां पे राजा ने बोला आप रुकिए अभी गाना उस आदमी को खड़ा किया कि इसको सजा दी जाए तब वो संगीतकार ने बोले हेरो राजा जी यही मेरा सच्चा मेरा जो बोलते हैं मेरा आशिक है ये मेरा इसको ही रखो बाकी सबको बाहर निकाल दीजिए तो यहाँ पे जितने भी कम लोग आए हैं कि ये सब को ही नूर है तो अपने लिए ताली बजा जीत बजा दीजिए आप सब लोग सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग हियर मैं चैम्बर के पूरे स्टाफ का भी धन्यवाद करता हूँ और थैंक्स टू अमेश फॉर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग ऑल द स्पीकर्स थैंक्स टू आवर सीईओ एम ए टी फॉर मिस्टर परेश पर एंड थैंक्स टू प्रेस एंड मीडिया जो हर दम हमारे साथ रहते हैं और हमारे जो भी प्रोग्राम है उनको हमने उनके पेपर में या उनके मीडिया में हाईलाइट करते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच